Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. As promised, I'm bringing you another St. Patrick's Day card and today we're going to be making a shaker card. So let's get started. I am still using some pretty tones of Distress Oxide inks. I have Twisted Citron, Mowed Lawn, and Lucky Clover. The paper I'm using today happens to be Bristol Smooth Paper. I kind of want to just switch up my papers today and get a different look for this card. So as before, I am using the makeup brushes that I purchased off of Amazon. I'll be sure to link the video above so you can see uh, what these brushes are all about and how you can bring them into your craft room. All right, so I went ahead and I put down that Twisted Citron and then I'm going to be bringing in that Mowed Lawn. First, I'm going to clean off my brush. Again, just by using a scratch piece of paper, this will help you to clean off your brush so you can move on to your next color. I'm just gonna tap off some of that color and bring that in. And as you can see, these two colors go so well together for any kind of green themed card. But of course, this is my second card that I said I was going to make for my sister. Our birthday is on St. Patrick's Day every year, and this year we're celebrating our 50th birthday. So I thought it'd be really cool to have a couple cards to give her. For some reason, when I make uh, cards, I just don't stop at one. So I went ahead and I laid down that mowed lawn. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my brush. Now, you'll see that there is a little bit of um, a gap between the two. I'm going right back in with that twist twisted citron and I'm going to blend that out. And these Distress Oxides are so easy to blend compared to the regular um, Distress inks because of the formula that's contained in these inks. Now I'll go ahead and clean off my brush one more time. And then I'm going to come in with that darker green. And this green here, like I said, is the Lucky Clover. I said recently in the video I posted earlier that I don't use this color a lot, but every time I'm due, I'm so wowed by how pretty it is. So I really need to just set this off to the side of my desk and make sure I use this color more often. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that into the rest of the colors. And look how pretty those shades are together. Now again, I'm just going to make sure I go over that uh, mode lawn and go back and forth in like a sweeping motion to get those colors to blend. That's what seems to work best for me when I'm using these brushes to get that seamless kind of play between the colors. Now look how gorgeous that is. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean off my craft mat. This is the glass mat by uh, Tim Holtz and Tonic. So I just spray some water on there and I just grab my rag that I just have for when I watercolor. And then I can go ahead and clean that mat off and then we're back to business. We can just go ahead and start crafting again on it. Now since I have the paper here, I want to go ahead and add some white gouache to this. The reason I'm using gouache and not just regular uh, white watercolor is because the gouache seems to have a little bit more um, color to it. So when I splatter it on my card, it doesn't fade back as much as if I was just doing white watercolor. So I have a large size six brush here and I'm tapping on that gouache. And you can see how very white and stark white it is on the card. And sometimes I just can't achieve that when I'm just using regular white watercolor. So I'll go ahead and tap that on. And I love, love, love adding this splatter marks to the back of my cards or to the back of my card panel rather, because I just think it gives it a little bit more texture. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put that on and then I'm going to go ahead and just make my own little splatter marks. I did this in a previous video for the other St. Patrick's Day card, which I'll list above so you guys can watch that one as well. And it just kind of fills in those random spots that you might not be able to hit when you're just trying to splatter it on there. Now I am going to grab my heat gun and I do want to heat this back just a little bit but look how gorgeous those greens and those white little splatter marks are. 
Now I read, went ahead and heated up my heat gun to get it nice and hot. And this was going to keep me from having a lot of bowing or warping on my paper. Now, once I had this set back and dried, I kind of thought, mm, I think I want a few more splatter marks. So I'm going to go ahead and go right back into that white gouache. And then I'm just going to add a few more splatters. I just really want that second layer of white to kind of like sit on the paper. And this is going to give me a little bit of depth when um, I go and dry this again. Again, I'm just coming in, adding some more of those random little marks just by pushing down the tip of my paintbrush. Now that looks pretty good. So now all I have to do is let this dry one more time using my heat gun. And I think that's going to give me enough of the splatter marks that I was looking for. All right, once that is done, I'm gonna show you just how cool that looks. Now I'm going to turn this panel into a shaker card. So I'm using the same dies, which are the Concord and Ninth Notable Numbers. And I use this on the other card, but this time I'm gonna turn this into a shaker. So I'm just grabbing a couple of pieces of washi tape and I'm taking off most of the sticky and I will line these two numbers up right in the middle of my card. And then I can go ahead and pop down that washi tape and then I can run this through my die cut machine. Now, if you guys missed how I'm using a craft mat, a rotary mat to die cut, I'll make sure to link that above as well so I can show you how to save some money on those die cutting plates. All right, now since I ran that through my Gemini Junior, I can go ahead and pop out those uh, numbers. Now I can save these cutouts for a little bit later to put on another card, but just for today, I'm just going to set them aside with the rest of these dies. So I know I'll already have a 50 already cut out for somebody else's 50th birthday. All right, now that looks cool. And now we can go ahead and start making that shaker card. I'm going to grab me a sheet of acetate and I just want to put this on the back and that's going to help contain all of those little um, sequins we're going to put in here. Now to put this down, I could use glue, but I already had some of my score tape sitting on my desk from the last card I made. So I just figured I would go ahead and use this. Now, if you don't have any of this score tape, you can just use a tape runner or some glue, but you just want to make sure that this stays on the card because if you lose this acetate or this acetate for some reason happens to shift, you're going to spill out all of those little goodies that you put inside your shaker card. I'll put down one more last line of that. I can go ahead and set that aside. And then I'm going to um, bring in my little pick tool. And this is going to help me release that release paper off of that tape. Now you can use the thinner score tape if you have that. Like I said, I just had this already sitting on my desk and I just went ahead and grabbed it. Now once I get that last release paper up, I can fold back any of the tape that was hanging off the side and I can place down that acetate. Now, if you didn't want to use acetate, you can use a tool, which is like the netting. You can use that and it would still make a beautiful card. All right, now since I have my window portion done, that looks fantastic. I can go ahead and start getting those shaker bits together. Now for the shaker bits, I wanted to use um, some really pretty green sequins, but I did think, you know what, I wanna cut down this card panel because I do wanna have a little bit of a white border. I don't want this to go all the way to the edge of my card base. So I'm just going to put this in my trimmer really quick and just trim down just a little bit of the um, top and the bottom. So this just makes this um, card base, I'll be able to see a little bit of that white. So I'm just taking up like an eighth of an inch. All right, I'll go ahead and pull that out. And now we're ready to go ahead and do our shaker card. All right, now I'll go ahead and flip that over and I'm going to use the same sequence in the same tape that I used in my other card. 
So this is 3M double-sided foam tape, and I'm just gonna double that up just by folding that tape in half. And then I can go ahead and trim off what I don't need and then cut right down the middle of this tape. This is just really gonna save me some tape. You don't necessarily have to cut this down, but for me, it's kind of easier to put it around the shaker bits if I have a thinner section of that tape. So I just have my scissors here. And as you can see, I'm just cutting directly down the center. Now, if you already have tape that is thinner than my 3M foam tape, you can go ahead and use that. Just make sure to double it up so you have a good depth to that tape so your shaker car will actually have some space to move around. So I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this off until I have it all um, contained. Now, if you, were, if you weren't going to put a lot of shaker bits in this, you don't necessarily have to double up that tape. You can make it a flatter shaker card, but just remember the flatter the shaker card is, the less your bits in the inside are going to shake. So when I'm putting on those side pieces, I'm making sure to get that to bump right up against that next piece of tape because we do not want any openings here because if we do, our shaker bits are gonna fall out. So I went ahead and I ran out of tape right in that little corner, but I need to make sure I seal that off. Otherwise, once your card is done, the recipient will go start to shake it and everything will fall out. So I just cut a tiny piece and I'm just squeezing it right in between those other pieces. And then I can go ahead and pop that down, rub that in, and now we're good. Now it's time to add in our shaker bits. Now, what I am using is the 28 Lilac Lane Sequence Mix. I picked this up from Simon Says Stamp, and look how gorgeous this is. Oh my God, like I do not want to use all of this because I need to like save this for other cards. I'm going to put just a little bit of this in because I did end up picking up another um, 28 Lilac Lane shaker components. Now, this is a really big box, and this is going to have like buttons in it, it's going to have some shamrocks in it, and just a few different color greens that are not already in that smaller tent. So I'm using my knife just to open that up and look at all that gorgeousness in there. Now, I don't wanna actually put the buttons in here because they're going to be a little bit too big to fill in the space with all the rest of the sequins I have in there, but I do wanna get some of those shamrocks in there. So as you can see, I'm just going to pick back up the buttons because I don't need them in this card. And then I can go ahead and save them for another maybe spring card that I end up doing at a later time. So I'll just go ahead and place those in and kind of fill that area up. Now I did leave some of the smaller buttons in there because they weren't overly large and it wasn't really going to take up a lot of my space. Now I did forget to put some of my powder around the edge of that tape. So none of my sequence kind of sticks to the edge of the tape. So I'm just using my little craft knife there just to kind of slide my sequence out the way just so I can put a little bit of that powder in there because I don't want any of that sequence when it goes to shake just to stick to the side of that tape. So just remember, anytime you're doing this, make sure you do this step before you start adding in your sequence. All right, now since I have all the sequence in exactly where I want it, I can go ahead and start pulling back the release tape on this to get ready to seal in all of that shake up bits. bits. Now, since I have that done, I'm just going to grab a white piece of paper. This is just a scratch piece of paper, and I'm just going to seal this off. Now I'm gonna line it up, and then really press down right around that tape to make sure I have a really good seal on that. And then any of the paper that's left over, I can just go ahead and take my larger scissors and trim that off. Now we have a cute little shaker card. How cute, I know my sister is going to love this. Now I need to go ahead and get a sentiment. So I'm using two sentiments from uh, two honeybee stamps 
sets. It is this one here. It's prayers and smiles. And because they have the same font, I was able to get an and out of one set and fabulous out of another set because you know, you're 50 and fabulous, right? So I'm going to grab the fabulous out of the smile one. And then we'll go ahead and line that up right next to that. And now once I place that down, I can kind of see, like I said, the font sizes are the same. So I can kind of see that they're going to line up very, very well together. And that's what I like about these two stamp sets is that they work perfectly together. Now I'm going to go ahead and press that down. Excuse my head. I just want to really make sure I was right on top of that sentiment. And then I can go ahead and grab my black ink. I'm using the blackout ink from Ink on 3 today. I'm going to go ahead and press that down. Now I do end up making a little bit of a mistake here. My cardstock was not shifted all the way over. So when I shifted it, you're going to see, I'm going to end up double stamping this, but never fear. All I'm going to do is flip that paper right around. I'm going to make sure my paper is tucked nicely into the corner of my misty. And then I can go ahead and stamp that out again. There's no problems when it comes to stamping. It's paper and ink, and we can restamp sentiment all day long if we have to. Now, since I have that done, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my trimmer and trim this piece down. Now, once I get this piece trimmed down, all I'm going to do is put this right across the 50 or right below the 50. And I love how that looks. I like that little bit pop of white on there because that's going to help me bring the white from my card base onto my card. So I have my ATG gun and I would just add some of that right to the back of that. I didn't want to pop this sentiment up because we already have a lot of thickness from the tape on the back for the shaker part. So I just wanted to keep what I was putting on top of this pretty flat. So I'm just going to line that up using my grid mat to help me out there. And then I can grab my scissors and just trim off the extra. Now we are ready to go ahead and finish putting this card together. I'm going to grab in a piece of Nina Solar White. This is the 110 pound cardstock. And this is the cardstock that is my go-to when I'm making cards. I'll go ahead and crease that. And I'm going to bend it actually the other way just to make sure the bottoms and the sides line up. And then I can use my Teflon folder, which is a must have in, a, in your craft room. If you do not have a Teflon folder, you're really, really missing out. You need to grab one quickly. Once I have that done, I can go ahead and start putting this down. Now I do want to add some more tape to the back of this. So it's the same height as the shaker component. Otherwise the middle of my card would end up sagging. So I'll use that other piece of that strip. Remember that I cut down the middle and I'm going to add that to the top and the bottom, just so I know that I have the same height. Now I am, I do have a little bit left of that tape and I'm not going to let that go to waste. I'm just going to go ahead and put that right underneath the shaker part. And then we'll have everything at the same height. Now I can go ahead and peel back that release part and go ahead and put this down on my card. Now, before I do that, I just realized that I need to make sure I put some glue on to the shaker part because remember there's no glue there and I really need that to stick to the card base as well. So I'm just going to grab one of my glue pens and just go ahead and add some glue to the back of this. But remember the goal in making a shaker card and making it even across your card base is just to make sure everything is the same height. So you don't have any parts of your card that kind of sag when you go to mail them out. So I'll use my mat to help me line up everything. And then I can go ahead and press down that gorgeous top panel. Now I love having that white because as I said, it pulls in, it pulls in right that white from the bottom of that card base. Now I did have that little part from the middle of the zero. I do want to add that back in. So I'm just going to use my tweezers for this and I'll let my tweezers hold it by 
adding just some glue to the back of that. And that's what's so handy dandy about those little glue pans. I'll dab off some of the extra off on a piece of scratch paper. And then I can go ahead and line that back up and place that down. Now look how cute this card looks. I absolutely love it. Now I didn't want to add too many sequins to the outside of this. So I grabbed two colors of my Nouveau drops. I did a lighter green to pull in some of that twisted citron from the top. And then I pulled in a darker green to pull in some of that lucky clover green from the bottom. This is a great way to mix up some of those Nouveau drops you have around. If you have like a gradient background, that's a perfect way to grab those colors and let them work together for you. Now, since this is, is St. Patrick's Day, I do believe that this is full of green and luck for my sister. And I really think she's going to enjoy this card. I'm just going to finish adding just one more of those lighter greens right across that sentiment strip, which gave me the perfect opportunity to use some of those Nouveau drops. All right, you guys. And that is the last of the St. Patrick's Day cards for this year. Here is the card totally done. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. I will see you guys in another video soon. Take care and have a great day.